Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all of those out there watching. It's Johnny V calling and today is part two of the Johnny V collection of Matchbox and Lesney products. Not all Lesneys were diecast. Matchbox, Lesney, Moco were originally manufacturing tin toys as part of their history and then they went on to die casting but they also manufactured a range of plastic garages and today's video will be highlighting that part of my collection okay garage number one this one first appeared in the 50s uh, 1956 to be exact and is a representation of an SO service garage that was not far from the Lesney factory in itself it was a real building at some time and they took their design from that the company that actually first manufactured this was I think called Pippin Toys and it was a blue garage with um, yellow forecourt and such with plastic pumps molded to the base Lesney were able to acquire the patent for it and since bought that company out and hence built their own versions of it there are two versions of this garage uh, this is the yellow forecourt with the red building um, there is also the reverse colors a yellow building with a red forecourt which I can't find anywhere um, but I will give you a tour of this one this one is all original uh, original box as well it um, still has the original price on it in pounds shillings and pence uh, that's both early English pounds and Australian pounds in our lower currency before we went decimal um, so I really don't know how to convert that to the money of nowadays but to buy one of these in this condition now anywhere either through auction sites or the place that where most people tend to want to look for things you are paying in excess of three four hundred dollars for a set like this in this condition um, I'll give you a tour of this one thanks for looking right we'll start with the uh, the bows uh, sorry the the sign this one is original I don't like to restore as like the original played with stuff I love the age of these things they tell a story and um, they'll stay this way in my collection as uh, you can see in the fine print molded in it's got Lesney written up I don't know if you can pick that up but Lesney written up in there and England above the sign there uh, the decals are a little bit battered and the paint as such but for the age of this thing I mean it's 1956 so it's well before me uh, by a good six years and um, I like it to the point where I love it. The bows, the bows themselves are the one that seems to be cropping up here and there and everywhere. Uh, but to find this guy the way I found him was a uh, was a real joy. Um, it's got one half decent decal on it, and the rest are all a bit tattered. But it's it's the condition I like them. They're they're, they're played with. They've got history. It's patina if you want to talk antiqu antiquities. It's it's just a joy to have. Uh, again, made in England by Lesney. Um, and the little chap is still smiling after all these years. It's very lonely though. He's been waiting for so long and still nobody turns up for petrol. The garage itself is... Got the, fork, uh, the good forecourt there for turn-ons and turn-offs. There's a printed point here here if we can get that to come up that says position for petrol pumps from the number one accessory pack which is that stuff uh, it has a little servicing ramp on here it has a little slider door there that uh, opens and closes for the garage to lock up at night time the uh, signage on the roof is all original washing and greasing sales service matchbox garage and the time is 20 past 12 uh, there is a significance why the times are on these on these service stations 
the other one that I have, the BP one, also has a time slot on it. I can't, I'm not sorry, not the BP, the SO one. Um, there's a significance there. I can't find any information out about it, but if anybody out there knows, let me know. And around the back of the garage, we have the two doors that open up so you can drive your car in and you can have a bit of a fiddle and play. And that's basically this girl. Made in England underneath. Which is all there. It's all original. I'll show you the box. The box is, as I said, it's an original box from 1950s. Uh, the price in the corner there, eight. I'm assuming that's eight shillings and eleven pence. Um, what that equates to nowadays, I wouldn't have a clue. But um, it's got the matchbox style, like the strike plates on the side. Nothing on the end end caps. And the uh, reverse side is printed upside down, so when you turn it over, it's the right way up. And it has the small little Lesney figure here in the corner, which is indicative of the Moco era. So uh, that's my little service garage. Now another good look at it, and then we'll uh, move to the next one. All right, petrol station, service station number two. This one is their second rendition and it's the SO Matchbox service station with the AAA servicing and the RAC, which uh, here in Australia we have the RAC T, RAC V, which is Victoria, RAC T is obviously Tasmania, um, and I'm not sure if it's in South Australia or Queens. Yes, it is Queensland, RACQ. And New South Wales doesn't have the RAC. They have a, another company. Um, I can't recall it off the top of my head. New, New South Wales boys will know that one. Uh, NRMA, there we are, got it. Um, so there we are. That's our service station number two. It's a uh, more modern design. It was... Um, stylized from the era of the late 50s early 60s i'm pretty certain this one came in during the 1961 there we are it's uh, just looking at my little information book here um, and that's uh, that's pretty much how this one stayed through uh, until they changed the design completely again we have the um, the little man with his bowsers um, waiting patiently for somebody to turn up but with the price of fuel these days I don't think that's going to be a, a, a go show for him again these guys are in original condition the um, the SO pillar this is a second set I have two of these obviously one for the other one I one for this one and um, yeah I'll give you a close look at all these things now right well the bowser and that you saw before this one's in a little better condition uh, than the other one but uh, there we are the little chap on there with a smile on his face and again the the SO brand they also changed a little bit these ones that one was a very cream color this one is just an off-white and there was a natural fault in the uh, die-cast run of these that they put the decals over and when you see some of these with holes in the center of the decals that's because there was actually a flaw in the die and um, they just put the decal over the top of it. So um, somebody else mentioned it, I think it may have been Lee, I'm not sure. Um, he had one that had a hole in it and wasn't sure why it was there. Um, that's the why. It, it was a, a, a short pour in the uh, mould and they, a lot of them came out with a little hole in there. So a bit of useless information, but part of the history. I'll take the little capstone off the top. Again, we have that clock. Uh, this time it's five past four. Uh, the other one was 20 past 12. It could be just a random thing, but there was a significance for it. So I don't actually understand that history. Uh, but there you have it, AAA, 
Matchbox Sales Service Station and the RAC, which is the Oil Royal Automobile Club. Uh, and AAA is Automobile Association, uh, I think, of America, because it would have been AAA, obviously. Um, so there you go. That's that bit. And uh, the station itself, I'll bring him up a little closer. He's got the uh, servicing ramp inside the little garage there with a manhole in front of it. Uh, obviously on and off ramps there on the forecourt. Uh, SO lubrication service. And then the on-ramp to take you upstairs to the showroom or in this car. I'm assuming it's a showroom up there um, for a station like this. And then in, inside you have the, um, the ground story with a little staircase going upstairs. I'll turn that around again and you can actually see it from the front. And there it is there into the front. This again is an all original. The only real damage to it is these age cracks in the glass. Um, like I said, these things are over 60 years old and you know we all tend to show cracks in age in our age over those years. I'll just pop him back together again and you can have a, a quick look at it once more and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, here's the third one in my collection in the lineup. It's the BP version of that uh, SO station before. Uh, they obviously did a full rechange. This one comes from uh, 1964, 65, I'm pretty certain. Um, and it became quite a popular seller, this one. Everybody seemed to be really into it. Um, and it seems to be the one that's most prolific on the second hand market. Uh, either in bits or in reasonable condition. Uh, mint versions of this go for good dollars. Mint versions of the uh, the two-story yellow one, uh, just out of my marketplace now, they're, they're ridiculous. But um, it's nice to have these guys, and uh, I'll go through the story on these. Right, we've got the Bowser in the front. They've changed the format. The same platform for it to sit on is there. The little man, the three Bowsers. Uh, the only reproductions on this are the two light posts here. Uh, I couldn't find one with original fittings, but the man is original. Um, the BP sign there is a redesigned um, structure and is appropriate to the play set that goes with this, the accessory set. Uh, again, the, uh, the roof signboard, uh, matchbox sales and service station with a BP logo. They changed the uh, the bracketing to hold the BP logo different to the clock one. It's uh, a little taller, but uh, formulated the same way. And that's the only die cut or apart from that. And the sign is the only die cast piece of metal that goes with these sets. Um, there is a company in England called Black Square Decals. A lot of you guys have used them before in your restoration work, I'm assuming before everybody became proficient in making their own decals nowadays um, that makes those and when he first started doing it he actually um, I sent him photos of this set to do the work with because he couldn't find one so um, there's a little link there with me and him and uh, it's something I'm quite happy and proud to be part of um, the box is a reproduction I've gotten that one from a company in Germany that remanufactures boxes in the old style so I'm assuming they'd be scanned old boxes and then they've just reproduced them in uh, in card I know Paul Restorer makes his own he's a very clever man he does a lot of fabulous work um, some of you guys if you're interested go and check his channel out on YouTube uh, but this one is um, I think the second rendition of this box there is another drawing version of this which is the first version of it um, but uh, this one is a little bit more more 60s. I like it. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, again, it's got the uh, the information. Oops, I'll get that so you can actually see it. It's got the uh, what it is there. Matchbox service station station service DPP 
and uh, BB Tankstell. So it's in uh, English, French, and I'm pretty certain that's German. And uh, MG1, match, Matchbox Garage number one. Uh, and there you can see, even there, it's got the uh, water staining and everything printed into it. So it's um, obviously taken from an original box. Uh, but it does mean well, it looks great in the cabinet. Unfortunately for the, the yellow version, I can't get a box anywhere. Uh, I can't find anybody that makes it. So I'll have to live without that one. All right, I'll just give you a, a quick tour of this garage as well. And then we'll move right along. So there we have the white manhole cover on this because it's on a green base, obviously. We have the, uh, the servicing ramps, the little stairway up the stairs. The glass and everything that this one is actually in in mint condition in my opinion it's 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 top hole the, there's nothing wrong with this unit at all uh, energol lubrication is opposed to so so grease and oil and uh, upstairs is in really good nick and downstairs equally as well with the little stairway heading upstairs so that's this and underneath we have, if I can get the light right, there we are. Matchbox Garage, made in England by Lesney. And now I'll pop him back down and you can have another ogle at that. I'll set it up properly. This one, when it's in display in my, cab oops, in my cabinet inside, I have actually the, the BP vehicles parked on it, the garage. Um, tow truck, the Dodge tow truck, the, um, the fuel tanker, and the, um, the, the long tanker that also came with this set. Um, so there you go, that's garage number two, three. Okay, well here we go, this is the last one in my garage collection of original Matchbox um, toys. This one is from 1971. It was the the last of the uh, the real garage play sets that they came out with. Um, they did other variations later on and into the 70s, 80s, and 90s, which became real plasticky toys. I mean, these are toys, but nowadays these are collectible. Whereas the modern stuff they came out with is just a bit ordinary, in my opinion. But yeah, they play things. Uh, this set, yep, as you can see, it's another BP station. Uh, very rendition, uh, rendition, reminiscent of the that era, the late 60s, early 70s style gas stations that they're out there. Um, some of them still look like that today. Um, the flags on the roof there, they should all be like the little checkered flag in the middle there, different colours of it, but they're long gone. So they were obviously replaced with uh, patriotic flags that I've managed to find. Um, if other countries around that watch this YouTube have these little toothpick flags and you want to send them my way, just give me a buzz and let me know. Uh, it'd be great to have flags from around the world on this one. Um, the playability of it is we have a, I shall turn you around a little, and we can see we have the, um, the sign here which is a, a taller version, uh, simulated light with the, um, the BP on it. These aren't water slide decals, these are actually stickers on these guys. Um, just shows how they changed their manufacturing over the years. But still a nice little piece to have, and it is all complete. Um, we do have the service ramp, which does work up and down, and it locates in a special spot there with Castrol lift up cardboard signs, but um, the fragileness of the cardboard is starting to show. Uh, we have our shop center here, or restaurant as it would be nowadays, uh, with all the goods and pieces on it. And then the service center is over here, and obviously the double bowsers there. This is the original box that came with this set. It's in pretty poor state for its age, uh, considering the other one is in mint condition. But um, I can't find a better box than this anywhere that I've looked either, and nobody manufactures this as a, uh, a replacement. So um, 
is missing its uh, end flaps. They, I have one of them, the other one's long gone. But um, the artwork on these is just stunning. I love it to, I love it to pieces. And uh, yeah, it's showing a lot of the uh, Matchbox cars of the era. Uh, we've got the, um, I think that's the, the Ferrari, the red one. Well, there's the green one there. And there's the uh, Thames tow truck out the back there. Uh, we've got, yeah, there's a few on there that are make out. You can make out what they are. All right, we'll give you a bit of a tour of the uh, the, the toy itself. I should pop it over here. Well, here's the end flap too. Um, there's a bit of scribble and marks all over it. It's funny, I was looking at these and listening to the comments of people when they do their restoration saying, oh, some young kid painted this up or it's a kid paint. It made me laugh quite uh, quite funny because we are those kids, blokes. I am, in all fairness, we are of the era when this was all done. If we'd like to change things, we were the ones that changed it. So now we're just putting it back to the way we like to have them. And uh, I always felt that was quite amusing. All right, I shall disconnect from the frame. All right, here we go. I'll give you a bit of a, a walk around the forecourt. So we come up your driveway, you've got, you know, garden beds and signage and our little ramp here that uh, comes up and down with the different hoses for the different gear on it. Uh, there's our sign. Yeah. Shop front. Our Bowser's. On the other side there we have car parking spaces and at the back of the garage there is, if I can get this to reach, we have a parking bay and a wash bay all built in. I'll do an over, complete overview from up here. You can see what that looks like from the top. So it's quite a large set. It's, um, it's about two foot long by a foot wide. So what's that in centimetres? That's 30 centimetres wide by 62 centimetres long. Um, and it's a neat unit. I really, really do love the old style that these were. And uh, that's basically it, guys, in this slot. I do have the fire station set. Um, but I might save that for another time and do a, a really good tour of that one for you guys. Hope you've enjoyed this. This is uh, just another sneak peek into my life of collecting Matchbox Lesney product. Like I said, they're not all die cast. They do make a lot of stuff in plastic. Um, especially back then, um, we all tend to think it's just the die cast cars. But this is part of the collection and uh, it gives me great joy to have it. So, uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye now.